Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to schedule a Facebook Live. Let's dive in. So the first thing you have to do is actually head on over to facebook.com slash live slash producer. You're gonna go there and then we're gonna come up and you'll see this page right here. Because we are wanting to schedule this more than 24 hours in advance, you're gonna see you can go live on go live. It'll allow you to go live automatically within 24 hours. So if you just wanna schedule this a few hours from now, you would use this go live section. But if you want to schedule this up to seven days out from the time it is right now where you are, that's when you're going to actually go ahead and select create a live video event. So let's go ahead and select that. And you can see it takes us to this page right here. Um, this is where you're going to go ahead and schedule your post. So you can click here and you can schedule it again up to seven days out. You're going to see uh, you can schedule it. You cannot schedule it past the exact time that it is right now. So I can't schedule this for 1030 uh, seven days out because that's too far ahead in the future. But I can schedule it, you know, uh, if the time has already passed. <laughs> so let's go ahead here. This is showing the profile that you're using. Uh, and this I'm going to have a post on my timeline. I'm going to leave that there. However, this is in this spot right here. You can change it to uh, who you want to be able to see it. I'm gonna go ahead and actually do this so it is only me. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Missed that click, I think. There we go. Uh, and then you can you can decide if you want to share it to your story or not share it to your story just by clicking that button right there. Here's where you get to add your title. So we're gonna do a test live schedule for, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Testing live, live scheduling. So you can see over here, this is actually the announcement post for your live stream. So you can see as I was typing, the text was changing over there. Um, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. It's gonna have your date and time. It's gonna have that button to allow people to click a reminder so that they'll be reminded uh, right before you go live. Um, and then you will have the URL created here, right here, and that's the one you're gonna to wanna to grab if you're gonna promote this anywhere else. Like if you're gonna promote it in say uh, an email, that's the, the link you'd want to grab to share to other social medias or with other people. Now you're able to still change up the way this, this po announcement post looks slightly and you can make it a little more custom by changing the image that shows up there. Automatically, you're gonna notice right here, it is pulling the cover photo of, of your profile. It's pulling your profile's cover photo or if it's your page, it'll be pulling your page's cover photo. Um, but you can change that by going right here and tapping select an image. And then you can change that image to whatever you would like. So if you wanna you know, showcase a guest that you might be having or anything like that, you can do that right there. Uh, and then we're gonna go, just go through a couple of other things before we jump into everything else. You're gonna notice your stream key is right here. So you're gonna copy that stream key uh, and then you'd be able to use that. Um, you can decide if in your settings here, you can decide if you want to end the live video if the stream stops. Um, if your stream latency, you can decide if you want it to be auto, normal, or low latency. Uh, you need to create this first before you'll have access to this setting. Um, but this is basically if you want to allow your live video to be embedded on websites or things like that. Uh, broadcast, uh, you need to click this if you're doing 360 or 180 video. Um, unpublish after live video ends. I generally tend to leave that off because one thing you're gonna notice is um, no matter how big of an audience you have, you're always gonna get more people to watch the live video after it is already aired. Um, it generally, it tends to be multiples more. Um, so you're gonna wanna most likely leave your live video up, leave it there so people can watch it on a replay. Um, but there might be occasions where it makes sense for your strategy to unpublish it after it goes live. It's going to depend on your situation. If you're just getting started or just needs some general advice, leave it up. Let's check out the viewing settings now. Um, do you want to allow viewers to rewind? I personally do. I want to have, allow them to have that ability. Um, if they need to jump back and hear something or if they don't care necessarily about being exactly live with me. Um, I want them to be able to rewind at the beginning and start from there if they so choose. Uh, do you auto generate captions? This is usually a really good idea for channels to do. Um, it makes it more accessible to more people. So I generally tend to turn that on. It's not always the most accurate, but 
I like to have that on. And then you'll see here if you want to allow viewers to message you, um, that's usually turned on for pages. And with that, that is all the settings. So let's go ahead and find that little blue button down at the bottom and click schedule live video. And there you can see my live video has been successfully scheduled for January 24th at 10, 15 a.m. Awesome, so let's go ahead and close that. And then what happens is it jumps you immediately to the kind of that go live section so that if you wanted to go live right now, right away, you'd be able to do that. We don't wanna necessarily do that because we already scheduled that live post. So what normally is gonna happen is you're gonna go away, go about your business. Um, so you're gonna exit out of that and then you'll be ready to jump back in to your live video. So let's go through that process, kind of show what that's like. Before we do, though, I do wanna jump and just show you, here it is on kind of that main page. This is exactly what it's gonna look like. Uh, you can see testing live video scheduling. You can see when it was posted. You can see it's only me. Generally, you'll wanna have that go to everybody. And here's the settings you get in this post. You're gonna see if you tap here, you have some ability to edit the audience, to edit the post, um, turn off translation, turn off, off translation, turn off notifications for this post, that's for you. Edit dates, so you can adjust the date right here if you want. Or if you click right here, you can actually go in and edit your details a little bit more about your video. But okay, now it is time for you to get ready. It's your maybe, you know, half an hour before your live stream, you're getting ready, wanna make sure everything's set up and ready to go. How do you go about that? Well, we just jumped back over to facebook.com slash live slash producer. I generally tend to find if you've memorized that URL, that's the quickest way to jump into all of this stuff and you can go pretty much anywhere regarding live streaming from here. So. We're back at this main page. We actually wanna click though that home button right there. And you can see we are now in that home spot and it says your scheduled broadcasts and events are right here. And this is that scheduled event, January 24th at 10, 15 a.m. Um, you have some dots here that allow you to copy the URL. So if you forgot to grab the URL uh, when you were originally setting things up uh, or weren't able to, you can grab that URL there, share it out with people. That's how you can build your audience and get people excited to join you on your live stream. Uh, you can cancel the broadcast, you can view the post, you can edit the post, but let's go ahead. We, we're ready to go, all that's good. Let's go ahead and set up live video. That takes you back to this page where you can go ahead and uh, you wanna make sure everything is set and ready to go. But all right, let's now go ahead and set everything up here to make sure everything is, you can test everything and you're ready to go for your scheduled live stream. First, uh, if you're going live with just a webcam, you can click this button here and go live directly from your webcam. Um, I, or if you're going live from your streaming software, say if you have a third party software like uh, Ecamm, like Melon potentially, like uh, vMix, things like that, you, that's, you're gonna actually use this here, you're gonna grab your stream key, and then you're gonna be able to go directly for, live through that software. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually set things up through the webcam. So let's tap our little webcam right there. So if we tap on this, you're gonna notice we have the black magic right there. That's, I'm gonna click on that, and you're gonna see down here is actually the video preview. It is gonna be, you're gonna probably notice it is slightly delayed. Um, that's just kind of the way things work here when we have things routed this many, many ways. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the appropriate audio, which is the Scarlett 2i2 for me. That's the mic right in front of me. Um, and you can see there the audio levels are bouncing around. Test, test, test. All right, so that kind of, that blue box is showing you your audio levels there. And we are peaking a little, so I'm actually even gonna turn that down just a tad, just a tad, so that hopefully we're not peaking nearly as much. Um, you also have the ability to start a screen share. Uh, so it, say you have multiple things open, if you wanna start that screen share, you can actually go ahead and you can see I have a couple windows open, so I can go and choose either, because I have two different displays going right now. Um, I can jump to different windows. Um, interesting, status indicator shows up, that's kind of interesting. Um, otherwise, I have a couple of other options for Windows. These are a couple applications that are open and I can have access to, or Chrome tab. I just opened another, uh, the new tab. So if I wanted to jump there, or if I wanted to jump and show this, I can do that as well. Let's go ahead and hit cancel. I don't wanna share that. All right. So and again, you're gonna see the video preview here. You can expand it if you want, if you wanna see the big video to make sure everything looks good or if you wanna drop it down. And then this event log is just gonna show you any bugs or anything like that that are, you're having issues with. And then again, you have the chance to edit your video details right here. 
so that's the setup. We all went through, made sure everything looks good, all the setup is ready to go. Let's jump into the dashboard. Dashboard is just kind of gonna, it's where I recommend you live during your actual live stream, especially if you're just going live on Facebook and not using a third party software or anything like that. Just hang out here, have this up. You can have your video preview so you can see what's going on. You will have your comments right here kind of rolling through. Um, and you have a couple options for this module. All these little dots here kind of allow you to move and adjust the module around. Uh, and then of course you can expand and collapse that. Um, I like having the comments up here. Um, insights, this is gonna tell you how many viewers, reactions, um, if you've made any clips. I have another video that talks a little bit more about clips, so be sure to check that out right there. Um, and then it'll show you some of your streaming metrics. This is also gonna be where you can create a poll uh, and things like that and open and close polls. I do have another video on polls right there as well. Um, and then this is your post details and any alerts that are coming through. And that's all of those pieces. And then this, these are gonna be the same exact settings um, that you had when you're setting things up. So we're not gonna run through that again. Um, and then if you go interactivity, this is how you're gonna see your polls. You can jump right to polls, questions, and graphics. So if I jump here, it's gonna take me to the polls page, just like that. But let's jump back to the dashboard. But now I wanna talk about this little button right here, enable manual mode. What's gonna happen or what I generally tend to recommend for people is to, especially if you have any sort of, again, extra graphics or if you have the ability to connect to that third party piece, I usually like to go live a little bit early. Um, whether it's three minutes, five minutes, for bigger events, it can be 10 minutes. If I'm doing a client stream, sometimes it's an hour. I wouldn't necessarily do an hour on Facebook. Um, generally for Facebook, if you're live about three minutes before you're actually scheduled to go live, that's usually a pretty good pretty good pace for me. Um, and usually what I recommend is either just hanging out and interacting before the official start time and then starting at exactly your start time and kind of letting people know that. Um, if you can have a little counter countdown timer again in, like, in your screen, that's great. Um, or just having that countdown timer there uh, counting down to your actual live stream if you're using a third party software, that's a great thing to do but we're gonna go ahead and just show you what that looks like. So you click enable manual mode. This little piece will come up and it will not start automatically. If you enable manual mode, then your stream will not start automatically. So even if you wanted to say start a little later than your scheduled time, this is actually how you do it. You'd enable manual mode and then you'll have full control. Basically that button down here turns into a manual button. If you don't do that, then at exactly at your scheduled time, your live stream will just start. Uh, and if you wanna keep things simple and you and just as easy as possible, leave it, don't enable manual mode and just let it start. And then you're starting to talk, you're interacting right away at the exact time you have scheduled. Again, I like to start it manually. So I enable this button. This gives you a little more flexibility on controlling exactly when you start. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap that button right now. And you can see it gives you a little countdown, three, two, one. And we are now going live on Facebook with a scheduled stream. And I did wanna note, note one extra little piece that happened here now that we are live streaming, and that is you get this little distribution uh, setting. So if I tap that, you're gonna notice that has the clipping sections. Um, I talked, a, I briefly mentioned that video, I'll go into much more detail in the clipping video right there. So be sure to check that out if you wanna learn more. Um, about clipping and what that all means. And then to end your broadcast, there's this big red button. If you want to end the broadcast, let's jump back over and see, and just kind of show you what some of the like stats coming in. You can see all the stats. So this is just what the metrics are gonna look like. And that's really how things are gonna work here. Um, and if you're ready to end your live video, you're gonna go ahead and tap that big red button and hit end live video. If you're not ended yet, it's gonna give you a little confirmation piece here. So remember that you're still not ended. Even once you hit the red button, you have to actually go ahead and hit end right there. And the live video is ending. And there we go, our live video has ended. And this is what you get here in terms of interactions and pieces. You can go ahead and view your post right. I like that they have this little quick actions piece. You can go ahead and view your post right away. You can trim your video. So when I was talking about adding, going live early, adding a little countdown or a little interaction, well, after you're done, 
generally I would recommend cutting that piece out. So go ahead, trim your video right away after that is done. You can trim the beginning. If there's any extra pieces at the end, go ahead and trim that um, to create a more tight piece of content for those replay viewers, which is gonna be great, which is generally what they are looking for because they can't interact with you or they don't need to see just a countdown timer going on screen. Those are great, great things to do to help get an audience there so that they're there for the main piece of your content. But once it's done, we don't wanna worry about that. You can also go ahead and create a clip from your video. And then of course you can delete the video and return to your newsfeed. Um, and I just wanna show you, it does keep all these pieces here. So you can keep some of your stats, you can keep any polls you created, the comments will stay up here, things like that. So that's all kind of right here in this piece. You don't just automatically lose that when you hit end video. Um, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am gonna go ahead and delete this video. And that is how you go live with a scheduled Facebook stream. Uh, and if you wanna learn even more about Facebook Live, check out this video. It's my full tutorial uh, here for 2022. Um, so jump into there, it'll take you through all the settings and I will see you in the next video.